Okay. Thank you very much. Um, we're really pleased with the, the focus of this workshop and appreciate this opportunity to share our experiences and perceived needs for our overseas families regarding use of respiratory protection. Next slide, please. So um, the Department of State is the lead foreign affairs agency working out of more than 270 U.S. embassies and consulates all around the world. And the American employees and the families who follow them overseas to live are my focus as they use respiratory protection outside of the workplace, uh, for example, while commuting to work or to school. Um, and as an industrial hygienist, um, I was very glad to hear a previous discussion about um, other uh, protective measures, and we do employ them and emphasis, emphasize them, mainly um, air filtration indoors. Um, so uh, this population um, may choose to use uh, respiratory protection, and uh, they make the choice on their own with input from our office. Um, and there are other people uh, around them that may be influenced influenced by their choices and practices. So we want them to set a good example. Um, so these other people that you may influence are the locally engaged staff at the embassies and consulates, locally employed um, staff's family members, and also people in the host uh, nation. So um, they uh, uh, are firmly a middle-class, well-educated population. And uh, they do have a lot of support in terms of medical care and also guidance that uh, we and our medical staff put out. Next, please. Okay, so um, severe air pollution is the main reason overseas families choose to wear respiratory protection, but there are, are others as shown here and previously mentioned, wildfires. Um, we had wildfires in uh, Australia last fall impacting a number of our locations and uh, normally they have excellent air quality there. Um, we had a volcanic eruption also last fall in the Philippines and of course uh, pandemic flu. But air pollution is the number one concern and uh, severe air pollution uh, impacts more than half of our posts around the world. And by severe air pollution I mean um, that the annual average PM 2.5 in these countries is worse than the worst area of the United States. And in some places, it's more than threefold worse. So um, the pictures in the um, upper left-hand corner is, an, uh, or the top picture is a side-by-side -side view of a two days in a row view from a, a residence. And on the left-hand side, it's obviously horrible. It's hazardous on the EPA air quality index. Um, so you probably wouldn't want to venture out. But the picture on the right next day uh, looks terrific, but um, it's actually unhealthy. And uh, still, you might um, want to get the kids outside because they're itching to get outside and uh, it's not going to get much better for in the near future. So most, quite often people um, report that they knew that the air quality was going to be bad but they didn't think it was gonna be this bad. Um, so they panic and they wanna know what they can do to protect their children, of course. So people overseas use a variety of uh, negative pressure type uh, air purifying respirators for particulates. And uh, we discourage them buying uh, cloth uh, base coverings from the sidewalk as shown here in this photo from Kathmandu, Nepal. Um, and our, our guidance is to first uh, consider your health effects and are you putting yourself at risk by virtue of wearing uh, a respirator? Do you have pre-existing medical conditions? Um, so if, if you decide it's decided that's okay, then uh, look for a product, a device that has quality filtration, uh, has, uh, it, it looks, appears to be well-made, make sure it fits and use it properly. So um, the picture second from the right shows uh, what we call an air pollution mask. And these are uh, lightweight, low profile. People like them because they can be folded up and inserted in a backpack or purse and carted around. They're reusable, somewhat cleanable. Um, some of them have some uh, 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 hallmarks of quality. Not None of them are uh, NIOSH approved. 
Um, one of them uh, uh, was pursuing NIOSH uh, certification several years ago, and that was quite exciting to us. But when I followed up, they had dropped that, and I don't know what happened there, but that obviously would have been um, quite uh, encouraging for um, people overseas. And um, so we, uh, in our office, only feel comfortable recommending something that's NIOSH um, certified. And my colleague Joe had located a elastomeric N95 with a low profile, and we encourage people to try those. Uh, we haven't gotten a lot of feedback yet. Uh, we don't see a lot of uh, filtering face piece respirator use, and I believe that's probably because uh, we are going to, we know that we're going to be using these long term and quickly it becomes cost effective to uh, get move to a reusable type respirator. Um, uh, that we do recognize that there are small uh, FFRs that are NIOSH approved. Next, please. So I mentioned that uh, the first thing we consider uh, um, as in a uh, workplace respiratory protection program is um, health indications of wearing a, a, a respirator. So our, our medical staff are very familiar with uh, doing these evaluations in the workplace and very concerned. Uh, we have a lot of concerns about recommending respiratory protection for children. They're not little adults. Um, if you have a, a child with asthma, they um, might benefit greatly from wearing a respirator and put their parents' minds at ease somewhat, um, but they might face greater risks from the respirator. So we need, the, our medical folks need clear guidance on uh, what's evidence-based guidance for, for them to make these uh, decisions and advise their patients. Um, liability concerns. Is there really a risk, um, uh, what, what weighing the risks and the benefits of respirator use for this population? What Are there some uh, types of respiratory protection devices that would be better for some versus others? So what tailoring should they be recommending or, or should we as industrial hygienists be recommending, recommending? What are the warning signs of having a problem due to the respirator, not the, uh, the hazard? Uh, exposure hazard. And uh, we may want need to differentiate between routine use and emergency situations. Uh, for air pollution, this is clearly a, a chronic situation um, and that people need to prepare for in advance. And then also, to, of course, to highlight the other exposure reduction measures. Next, please. So um, a big problem we have run into is, is fit. And uh, we do what we call leak checks. And this is not a um, uh, anywhere close to a OSHA uh, fit, um, fit test, or um, uh, it's simply having people show up, put their respirators on, and we do a challenge test and see if it leaks. And it takes just seconds because we're seeing a lot of failures. So um, here you can see the results of uh, one uh, round of testing that we offered in um, India. And all the family members had um, taken steps to find what they considered to be a quality um, device. And um, we saw this high rate of failure. So some of them become upset. They've been using these for a while. They um, probably spent more time outdoors in the severe air pollution than they would have um, had they known that it was not affording them terrific protection. And um, now what do they do? Going forward, they don't have an effective um, piece of uh, respiratory protection device. Okay, so this is our, our wish list. Um, we have a lot of questions such as, is respiratory protection even needed for this population. Um, we believe it is likely, if you look at the um, California experience and recommending that um, outdoor workers who are above um, AQI, I believe 150 for an hour, um, that's a pretty common occurrence overseas. And we're talking about children here, so we wanna protect them. 
So when do they need it? And um, what's the, the mechanism for triggering them to don this respiratory protection? Um, what are the medical indications? I just reeled off all the concerns our medical staff have. And it seems there needs to be a lot more uh, detail and consistent vocabulary used to explain all these issues surrounding respirator use and choice. Um, in terms of respiratory protection devices themselves, there needs to be quite a variety or a tremendous universal fit. Um, they need to be reasonably cost. Um, the uh, air pollution masks are, are actually not inexpensive. They cost about $50 a year. Um, and uh, they, the, they and the any replacement parts need to be readily available. There need to be uh, clear information. Um, I like the assigned protection factor like system. Perhaps we don't need a protection factor of 10 for this group. Maybe something lower would suffice. Um, maybe there should be uh, information conveyed about the breathing resistance from the respiratory protection device itself. Um, these have, the devices have to be acceptable for the um, users or they won't wear them, need adequate filtration. Uh, they need to be uh, fit the wearers and seal every time it's donned, including for children, ranges of facial features. And um, it also should be predictable what size you need when you're ordering so you don't waste money. Um, we'd also like to see an easy uh, means to do to check the seal and fit. Uh, cleanable is always desirable and they should last at least uh, six months. But we really want to steer clear of creating a false sense of protection, which I'm afraid that a lot of people overseas have. Um, so conveying that and last but not least, uh, it would be great to eliminate the need for donning the respiratory protection in the first place, eliminate the hazards other ways. Mm -hmm.